How's it going? We're going to talk about some irregular red blood cell shapes right now. And just to clear up the overarching term here for all of these is going to be under poikilocytosis. Uh, those are all different kinds of that, and that just means there's something wrong with the shape of the red cell. That's all that term means. So to start off, we have this poorly drawn acanthocyte here. Um, the, the, the phrase there, the, the segment acantho is the Greek for thorn, and that's kind of an easy way to think of it. It's kind of spiky and more, more on a natural, irregular, uh, imperfect kind of pattern, and that's actually called irregularly spiculated. The extensions coming off of it are not perfect or parallel or anything like that. Um, so for for acanthocytes, you're going to find them mostly in like A beta lipoproteinemias, um, also in liver disease, usually more on the severe end of that. Yeah. So next up, we're going to have echinocytes or echinocytes, um, otherwise known as Burr cells. And these ones are, it's not coming out too good, but these ones are more perfectly arranged, more symmetrical. You can see them more rounded off sometimes too, or other times they're going to be just kind of perfect spikes going off all around the same length. And they're also more commonly known as Burr cells. Don't mix that up with these though. These are sometimes referred to as spur cells. I just don't really like to talk about either one of them. Um, let me throw in here. The cause, severe liver disease being the most common cause. And then for these, for like the echinocytes or the burr cells, you have uh, uremia being a leading cause. And you also have, sometimes they can be an artifact, like for instance, alkaline glass. Um, effect. That's less common though. Uremia is going to be the main reason you might have that there. And these, you know, like I said, these are irregularly speculated. These ones, the, the, uh, the burr cells are regularly speculated. Basically they're, they're symmetrical or a little bit more perfect. Next up we have liptocytes. And they're going to be something like that. They can be shorter than that too, um, but the, the, main, the main idea here is they're an elliptus. So the sides are parallel to each other and a little bit more perfect. They, they can be anywhere from like an egg shaped all the way down to like a rod or like a fat bacilli. Um, the elliptocytes. And uh, for these elliptocytes here, you're going to have the, the cause being anywhere from hereditary elliptocytosis, uh, which is probably like the most obvious um, way to remember their elliptocytes. Um, you also see it though in sometimes in iron deficiency, iron deficiency anemia, as well as some thalassemias. Next we have a very similar kind of an ovalocyte, um, or it's a, mic a macro ovalocyte is how it's called. Um, and these are similar, but they're a little less perfect. Uh, the, their pattern is basically they're, they're an oval, but they're not an ellipsis, so these are not these sides are not going to necessarily be parallel. Um, well, sides. And these are seen in um, megaloblastic anemia. I like to just think of it macro mega. I'm not sure why that, that sometimes helps me. So next up we have these cells, which are a lot less common. I haven't really seen too many, a couple. Um, I've heard them called a lot of things. I think the, the most scientific term for them is a dagmocyte, or in other words, uh, a bite cell. Bite cell. And these can be, I, what my understanding of what they are is, it's a, a segment of this red cell was kind of bitten out uh, by the removal of uh, denatured hemoglobin from some kind of macrophage within the spleen. So I think that that's kind of their way of making sure that there's nothing wrong, you know, that's not going to develop into something, or if it's dysfunctional, they want to get rid of it. Um, you will often see these in hemolytic processes. Now moving on, we have schistocytes. 
which my favorite to draw they're just basically little squ uh, squiggles but um, yeah little tiny segments of red cells and as you might imagine schistocytes are as a result of red cell fragmentation there was some kind of red cell going on in circulation something caused it to break apart could have been a parasite some kind of bacteria it could have been going through a narrow area a lot of different things can cause this uh, but commonly you'll see it in DIC which is you know more severe and any kind of hemolytic process which is a broad term but a lot of things can cause it and you will see these almost always as microcytic because as you can imagine if there's any kind of red cell even if it's a macrocytic one if it's broken apart into smaller pieces you know you're gonna you're gonna see some pretty small pieces so next up we have sickle cells or drapanocytes they can be quite quite a variety of shapes here this one, this one on the right is more of like an actual totally sickled cell. This one here is what I almost always would see on a peripheral blood smear. It looks more like a banana to me. And um, yeah, it, it's a result of the hemoglobin S. Trypanocyte. It's a result of the hemoglobin S being included in that red cell. And In the blood bank you're going to have to do a sickle screen on the donors usually before they can get that blood because if they're trying to get in a transfusion most likely they're already in some kind of sickle crisis and obviously giving them red cells from someone else that has sickle cell is not ideal uh, might just exacerbate the issue next up we have spherocytes now on paper and oftentimes under a microscope you're going to see this as basically just a circle and you're probably wondering aren't most red cells already circle the important part is to think of it on a 3d scale spherocytes are physically spheres versus most healthy red cells are like a biconcave disc shape now these are not uh, spherocytes these are not biconcave discs they're physically they're bloated basically red cells and in that they can often I think usually they're going to be smaller um, on the anisocytosis scale they're going to be microcytic and um, this basically the main impact that that has is they have decreased flexibility so this this comes in to play when they're trying to fit through capillaries and, and kind of maybe bumping against the walls they are much more likely to lyse and of that you often see them in lysis because there there were other ones before these and they lysed and that's kind of the, the pattern you'll see. Now you have, oh sorry, and I want to mention too, these are seen in um, hereditary uh, spherocytosis. Hereditary spherocytosis as well as, and in that you'll see an increased MCHD. Um, ABO HDFN, so like hemolytic uh, disease of the fetus and newborn, you see that, and any other hemolytic process, like I said, if there are spherocytes, there's probably lysis at some point along the way. Next up we have stomatocytes and I guess the best way I can draw this is kind of just like a little almost looks like oftentimes like a bent or a straight elliptocyte type shape within the red cell uh, which is the pallor and similarly sorry stomatocyte almost like a slit or you can remember that as like a, a stoma like in someone's neck this is like a stoma in the red cell um, but it's not actually a slit it's the pallor is it looks different because again the red cell is not biconcave disc it and for that it suffers in the terms of flexibility it has those issues there I've heard other people call it coffee bean shaped or even kissing lip shaped to me I just look at it as like a slit in the cell um, and physically on a 3d scale it's going to be bowl shaped Again, this, this has all those issues with lysis, um, and particularly in stomatocytes, they can be hereditary, uh, like uh, hereditary stomatocytes, uh, 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 hereditary stomatocytosis, that's a tough one. And also liver disease is a common one. 
common cause of that. They can be congenital or acquired. So next up we have target cells or codocytes. I don't like calling them target cells personally because it just it messed me up too many times. I would see that and think, oh, that's a target cell, but then they're looking for the scientific term and I forget what it is. I just remember it as a target cell. So you can call it that if you want but it's kind of obvious to remember that one. What's harder to remember, I think, is the codocyte, which is its, its proper uh, scientific term. Now, that is not too bad to remember because there's two O's in codocytes, and these look like an O. So uh, that's just kind of how I remember codo, codocytes. So you'll see these in liver disease. Hemoglobin C as well is, a, is one. Um, any kind of thalassemia, you could see them. And then um, hemoglobinopathies, HTB. Hemoglobinopathies, yeah. So in these, um, per lab CE, they kind of define it as, or, or they, they explain the cause as that the surface of the red cell is increased disproportionately to its volume. So basically, that could be caused by a decrease in hemoglobin, as is in as is seen in uh, iron deficiency anemia or an increase in the cell membrane. <clears throat> Next up we have the teardrop cells. These are called uh, decryocytes. And that one I think is the, the most easy way that I remember it is decryocytes. It has the word cry in it. Decryocytes. And you can remember that as teardrops. You know, you cry in this teardrops. Um, they oftentimes don't actually look like the, the stereotypical teardrop shape. I, I see them more like this, and those are, to me, looks like a, either a ping pong paddle or, I don't know, some kind of, some other, maybe like a tennis racket. Um, but anyway, these are seen in extramedullary uh, hematopoiesis. Extramedullary poiesis. Um, they're also seen in thals. Uh, and pernicious anemia. So I also read on a different source the um, uh, any kind of bone marrow fibrosis. You can sometimes see them. That's like less common. Uh, I think, and in, in you wouldn't necessarily see one of these and uh, attribute it to that. So that I, that's just kind of a side note there. So lastly, I just wanted to go over poikilocytosis irregular shape. Anisocytosis. Irregular size. I don't really have too good of a way to remember that. Um, poikilo, I just pictured like you, you kind of like poke, poke the red cell and the, something maybe distorted the red cell. I don't know, that's just, I think of like a poke or, you know, red cell got poked or something. Anisocytosis, it has the so, so I just think so in size, anisocytosis, that's how I, I just think about it that, that way. Anisocytosis. And tosis usually just, obviously there's something going on, something irregular. Alright, I hope this helped someone.